Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over these MSA Sword and Supreme Pro X hearing protection. Now these are considered by many to be the best hearing protection on the market in terms of electronic hearing protection anyway and the price certainly reflects that. But um, are they and what do I think of them? I suppose that's what we're going to do here in this video. But before we get into all that I'm going to go ahead and show you basically the feature set of them, how they work, and all those details coming up next. get into the features as well as how they operate and uh, first and foremost I want to mention that there are many different models of Sordans of MSA Sordans so these are the Supreme Pro X's and uh, these are sort of their top of the line pair now there are different levels of uh, MSA Sordans analog digital these are all digital in terms of the audio which is very very good which we'll get into a little bit uh, later on um, one thing I want to point out though is you look at this chart here on the left, it sort of so shows you the different features of the different models. There are even further breakdowns, like for instance, this pair here has a fully leather headband. There's some that are sort of composite headbands. And then as you see here, this sort of camo sweat uh, wicking headband. So there's all different models. So uh, the chart there is just sort of an overview. So getting on to the basic feature set of them here on the front. We have these uh, directional microphones. One thing that's very good about this hearing protection is that you will know uh, when you're wearing them and you have them on what direction something's coming from. It gives you very good awareness around you as things are moving and people are moving. It lets you definitely know where it's coming from and orient your attention that way. Basic on off buttons here is that we have the on button. You press and hold, it will beep and come on. And then to turn it up, and to turn it down and uh, if I quiet down here you'll probably be able to hear it as I turn it on. So you can hear it beeps and then beeps to turn off. I should mention that if you don't turn them off within four hours it does have an auto off feature so if you leave them on and put them in your range bag you're not going to come back and have dead batteries it will turn off automatically after four hours. To prevent that from happening when you're wearing them just hit any one of the buttons uh, during that four hour period and it will restart the timeline there. So I just removed the battery cap. You'll note here on the battery cap that it is all steel, has good knurling on there, and uh, the threads on there are lubricated and o-ring sealed. Now the, the Sword and Supreme Pro X's, which we have here, are, as MSA Sword and says, waterproof. Now I don't know that I would want to dunk them in water, but compared to some of their other um, lower level or more entry level ear pro that those are water resistant. These are waterproof according to them. So all of your electronics on this are actually going to be uh, using steel boards. So um, where the connections aren't, it's a little bit more beefy. These weigh in at 1.3 pounds. So they're not super lightweight, but they're built for durability. Um, so steel, wherever steel needs to be, there's steel. All these connection points are steel. And then on the actual electronics themselves, once they're put in place, they're covered up with a lacquer over all the electronic connection points. So the reason they do that is uh, it makes them very impact resistant as well as weather resistant. So those of you that are familiar with LZ of flashlights, for instance, and how they do their fully potted electronics, similar type concept here on these ear pros. So that's one of the things you're paying for uh, when you're paying the kind of money you pay to get these. So um, the batteries are pretty simple. They just drop in. It takes two AAA batteries. You can see the orientation here. Uh, you just drop them down in and then close it on up. So it's not too complicated. I've read some reports online of people complaining about the batteries and putting them in. I don't know. To me, it's not that hard, guys. Uh, but I mean, hey, if you don't like it, I guess it's, it's an issue for you, but you just drop them in and they seem to work just fine. On the rear of the Ear Pro here, we have a 3.5 millimeter jack for connecting like an MP3 player, a radio, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, that you can listen to for sort of added communications capability. All of the Supreme Pro X models come with the gel ear cups. Now these are extremely comfortable and give you a really good seal. If you're wearing, say, like a baseball hat or wearing sunglasses, it's going to go around those and still provide a good seal to give you the hearing protection that you're paying for with these. So set those aside and just point out some of the other things on there. The headband on the leather one here is extremely comfortable. Uh, zero issues with it at all. The one thing I point out though is that it is leather, so sort of a natural material. 
I was out in the rain with these for two days, I believe at one point, and uh, I had a little bit of what looked like and probably was mold growing on the inside, a little bit of leather cleaner though it came right out, but just something to be aware of because it's not a synthetic material that you do have any issue that you have with leather, you do have with that uh, headband set. But for me, they're very comfortable. I prefer these personally over these in terms of comfort, uh, really without question, actually, these are extremely comfortable. Now, in terms of the headbands themselves, they are adjustable and there are four different click positions, I believe, on each side. So I'll try to quiet down and let you see how that works. There you go, got it to snap that time. So four, four positions on each side, so if you have a big head, if you're wearing a big hat, whatever the case may be, you can adjust them to fit you, and then push them all back in there. And uh, when you do that, sometimes with the leather thing here, you have to re-straighten it out, but no big deal, and you're back in place. That's how they work, and that's the close-up and everything, but there's two main criticisms that you hear of these uh, hearing protection, and the first is going to be the noise reduction rating. So um, one thing you really have to understand with noise reduction rating is that there's no actual standard in terms of how companies advertise it, because the noise reduction rating of a uh, set of hearing protection are going to be very different depending on what frequency that rating is taken at. So these ones, generally online, you'll see them rated either at 18 or 19 um, in terms of the NRR. So that is the absolute worst performance frequency for the, the whole range of the spectrum of sound for these hearing protection because MSA Sorden reports sort of worst case scenario. So um, in the range that most gunshots are going to go off and these are going to give you a NRR of somewhere between 25 to 33. Now this is a really kind of complex subject. I've probably read more about these hearing protection than any other product I've reviewed before in the past, which is saying a lot because I read about electronic hearing protection all the time because I, for some reason, this channel has become sort of the electronic hearing protection review channel as of late, uh, which I don't mind, it is fine. Um, but I read a lot into it and I'll put a decent article below uh, for you guys who want to sort of check this out. But MSA Sorden puts out charts, uh, different frequencies that they do different testing at so you can really read up on it. So again, uh, compared to what most hearing protection would, would rate at and test at, I would say these are probably realistically more on the 25-ish to 30 NRR rating. Now, that said, what does that translate into in terms of real world performance and what do you actually hear? So I shoot outside 95 to 99% of the time. So for me, unless I was using some sort of big bore break rifle, these are going to be just fine for really just about anything. Um, I've used them with ARs, AKs, some 308s. Um, I've had no issues with them. Um, obviously fine with pistols as well. However, when you go inside um, and you're shooting in indoor ranges or for home defense, uh, obviously home defense, it's not a huge deal because any kind of noise reduction rating you can get is good. But uh, if you're going to shoot for prolonged periods of time indoors, uh, particularly with rifles or rifle breaks, you're going to want to double up in my opinion. So that's just sort of how we look at it. But the beauty of these is that they can amplify the sound four times what your normal sound is. Um, anything below 82 decibels anyway, that's what gets amplified and doesn't get filtered out. And those, uh, that's going to give you the ability that even if you're wearing earplugs, you're still going to hear really well with it. So that's pretty cool uh, there. The audio quality on them in terms of the digital ones like these are phenomenal. Um, simply excellent. No issues at all with it. You hear crystal clear. You can hear things that you would never hear otherwise, which uh, which is why one of many reasons that if you're going to use uh, ear, hearing protection for home defense, I always recommend electronic hearing protection because it's going to give you very good situational awareness. In fact, you, like I said, you can hear better with these than you can with just the naked ears, so it's sort of an advantage uh, for sure. Um, the other downside that you hear about them is going to be the price. These come to market somewhere in the... 250 to 325 depending on a feature set and you know if you catch a sale or something like that uh, price range so pretty expensive for sure uh, for that you get very sturdy durable construction um, really good audio like we talked about and uh, like I said they're generally considered to be some of the best out there I tend to agree with that now something to think about is if you're going to get these and wear them under a helmet like you always see online with all the special operations guys wearing them and stuff like that I don't recommend you actually get this pair. There's a pair that has sort of like a neck band and over the head band thing that I'll roll in a picture of here. Um, those fit much better under a helmet. You can wear these under a helmet. I've done it. Uh, it's not super comfortable. I'll get the other ones if you're going to do that. But for most regular folks who are going to be at the range plinking and stuff like that, 
these are definitely the ones you're going to want to look at. Um, I actually prefer the leather headband versus the like the sweat molded cam headband ones that you see. Both are great, um, but just personal preference, I suppose. I think it's because I don't have any hair. <laughs> I tend to prefer this feel on my actual head, but that's about it. Um, if you have the money and you're looking for excellent hearing protection, I absolutely recommend them. Do you need them? No. Uh, there's plenty of other good hearing protection at a lower cost point that simply works. They're just not as nice. So the way I would equate it, I guess, in terms of when you just feel them and hear everything in it, um, is like if you close the door on like a Ford Mustang, which is what I used to drive with many of you know, uh, it has a feel to it. If you close the door on like a Lexus, it has a feel to it. And one of them just feels nicer, right? The Lexus is going to feel nicer. So that's sort of the way everything sort of feels on here compared to like the Peltor range guards and TAC 100s and stuff. And those work fine. Like I'm talking I'm not bad mouth them. Just these are just nicer all the way around. I think that's about it, guys. If you have any questions about these or anything else we review here on the channel, you can always post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.